On today's episode of The Juice, we have the incredibly special and always inspiring Jerry Topfer. Jerry is the founder and president of Kula for Karma. If you aren't familiar with Kula for Karma, you will want to learn about this incredible organization that has changed more lives than we can count. The organization's mission is to offer therapeutic yoga and mindfulness training to those who have been challenged by various types of mental health issues. I'm excited for Jerry to share her wisdom with you. Welcome and thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you for We're excited. Um, so before we get started with the questions, okay. can we play a game? Sure. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. So the game is basically, you have 60 seconds to answer these questions. If you answer them, you're going to get a prize. Oh, wow. Okay. If you don't answer them in 60 seconds, you just get to be interviewed. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so who has a timer going? Ready? Good. Okay. Ready? Tattoos or piercings? No. iPhone or Android? iPhone. Chips or french fries? Chips. Yoga or meditation? Meditation. Mac or PC? Mac. Breakfast or no breakfast? No breakfast. Favorite president? Uh, Kennedy. Party goer or party thrower? Both. Stay in or go out? Stay in. Laundry or dishes? Uh, dishes. Vegetarian or vegan? Vegan. Massage or facial? A massage. Dress up or dress down? Dress down. Favorite gym? Uh, uh, Anatomy 1220. I thought you were going to say Equinox. In <laughs> Miami, sorry. <laughs> Favorite feature? <laughs> Favorite what? Feature. Uh, movie, you mean? No, of you. Oh, favorite feature. Um, my smile. Okay. Credit card or cash? Uh, credit card. Sweater or hoodie? Uh, uh, hoodie. Louis Vuitton or Gucci? Gucci. Text or call? Uh, text. Is it wrong for vegetarians to eat animal crackers? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, no. Uh, city or suburbs? City. Biggest pet peeve? Um, not uh, connecting eye to eye. Like that? Yeah. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Smoothie or milkshakes? Smoothie. Hard shell or soft shell uh, tacos? Hard shell. And holistic or traditional? Holistic. Yeah. Yeah. I think you <laughs> won. <laughs> yep. Okay. Awesome. So your prize is I'm going to make a donation to Kula for Karma. Oh my so, God. So, yes. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. I'm excited to talk about Kula. And you. Thank you. Yep. So, okay. Was that fun? That was so fun. I think it was fun. <laughs> How cute is she, you guys? You have to watch this. This is going to be awesome. I got a yourself. I got <laughs> That's not very yoga of you. No, I'm just kidding. I'm on the journey. Exactly. I haven't quite arrived. Uh, no, you've arrived. And that's what we're going to talk about. Okay. So since you founded Kula for Karma, you're probably the best person to explain what it is and what the mission is. Tell us about it. Okay. So Kula means community. Okay. And Karma is doing good deeds for others. And so we are a national nonprofit that offers therapeutic yoga and meditation to populations struggling with mental health, trauma, and addiction. So what kind of like trauma would that be? Anything or? So we work in, um, we work in rehab uh, facilities, inpatient and outpatient. We work in hospital facilities, mental with mental health, um, patients that are, are struggling with mental health. So inpatient and outpatient. Okay. Um, homeless and crisis centers. Oh, wow. So that's juvenile detention centers. Um, we work with women who are um, uh, dealing with domestic violence. Um, we work with disordered eating um, and runs the gamut. Yeah, that's amazing. Of, so you say trauma, we work with veterans, we have worked with um, um, firefighters. So anyone dealing with, um, and, and, but it's not anyone dealing because we're all dealing, but people that have really um, hit rock bottom, right. so to speak. A different level of dealing. A whole different level of, of post-traumatic stress. Mm. And we work with a lot of now um, uh, uh, medical students, uh, medical residents, and attendings because of their high rate of suicide. Wow. And um, depression and anxiety. And the um, body for residents has, has shifted in that they now have to offer wellness so i i feel like you know there's definitely you know a mental health epidemic definitely we're in crisis know, for sure crisis and an opioid crisis and um 
we've been doing it for 13 years. It's amazing. And it wasn't as in vogue 13 years Definitely. ago, the, these type of integrative resources. But now it truly is part of um, treatment. Yeah, it's part of our it's culture. Of, yeah. And it's an expectation at this point, whereas before it was like, oh, what is this? airy Yoga, fairy stuff yeah the whole person, yeah god, god forbid you actually look at the whole person i mean come on can't you just prescribe meds right right and yeah. so you know in the very beginning we had doctors writing prescriptions for the meditation and the yoga. Wow, so that's that cool. Oh really, yeah. And now it's really You don't just, need that. It's just part of it. You know what? Continuing to be part of yeah. it. Yeah. You know, still a lot of education, but they realize cuz now people are asking for it. Right. Right, because so, they know they need it. They're so at such a vulnerable spot, but man, you're making an impact. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Definitely. Okay. So um, you were an advertising executive in your prior career. What compelled you to change careers and what inspired you to start Kula for Karma? Talk me through it. Hmm. Well, when I was, um, I was in publishing in mm -hmm. the 80s at the height of publishing. Yep, with some high profile and, magazines um, I saw. You know, I, we, yes, I was at uh, Glamour Magazine and, and uh, Family Circle and, and, and Child Magazine. And um, I really, you know, I look back now and I realize there was a lot of things, a lot of skill set that I had to do the job, you know, identifying the right person, the clothes, you know, the ability to present and connect, you know. However, I was dealing with a lot of social anxiety. Um, a lot. Yourself. Myself. Okay. At, at that time in my life. Mm -hmm. And because of what I had gone through in my life as a 16-year-old, as a and I myself experienced trauma, I went out in the world as a warrior and put on the armor and went out, you know, to do what I needed to do to survive in the world. And I... Um, you know, my outsides didn't quite match my mm -hmm. insides. Which I'm sure so many of you can relate to, for sure. And so I did my job, and you know, at that time it was a very cutthroat, that's yep. when women were becoming publishers, and very competitive environment, and there's nobody leaning in. There's right. no Cheryl right. Sandberg, there's no, <laughs> you know, there's nobody helping. It's, or yeah, doggy dog, help. yeah. Doggy dog, and so, I would get up and, and present and do what I would do and experience a physiological experience in my body a, a around stress and anxiety. And, and that is, um, you know, what stayed with me for a really long time. And um, I, from that time on, I, I would mask it and I started to drink to alleviate mm -hmm. my, my anxiety. And, and did that work? It worked for a really long time <laughs> until it stopped working. Right. And um, I am actually going to share for the first time um, in public that I'm in recovery. Good for you, congratulations. And although, thank you, I run an organization for 13 years that is all about no more suffering and silence. And everyone has been so, so brave in coming forward and sharing their story. And we are really shifting the stigma. Mm -hmm. It was something that was very, um, I myself needed to get to a point where I felt comfortable sharing it. Oh, it's so courageous. I mean, it's very hard when you look the way you look and I don't mean physically in your beauty but your energy and you're having it all together to then say to the world but this is really going on inside and you don't know that I went through this or that I'm going through this and for you to do that you open up the door for other people to do it I hope so you, you do I by by sharing it it took a long time to get to this place and I am so about service and creating safe containers and mm -hmm. for, you know, and I care so deeply yeah, about you can feel it. people, you know, and if I could help, I mean, I've told my, my kids, you know, that if there's any, anyone, I mean, I'm not sharing my story, but if there is a young person or anyone you know 
that needs to hear my story, share it. Yeah. And of course, my daughter the next day was like, Mom, I, I, I spoke to her. Oh, you know, That's like, so funny. And so, and, and my husband needed to feel more comfortable with it. Of you course. Know, people in the world do have a stigma. And I work so hard every single day to stay sober. And I, you know, I, I am at a point where, you know, I've made it look easy. But um, it's really, um, I, I have to um, be kind to myself in recognizing how challenging, you know, it is and how I work it and how I sponsor other people and how I am so dedicated to, to working my program and so that I could go out. I mean, I would share my story when I go, went into prisons and halfway homes and, you know, and I, you know, there would be people that like I look, I go in, and I look a certain way, right? They'd be like, than you. "What?" And that's the way we connected on yep, such of a course. deep level, you yeah. know. And they were like, they were the ones that were like, "Yeah, you go, girl." Yeah, because all of this disappears when you get to that level with to a person. Get, yeah, when you get to that level, you can be from different backgrounds and have different appearances and just live different lives. But when you get to the nitty gritty granular of it, we're all the same. We are all the same. And you know, that's, you know, whether it is, you know, whether you're masking it with food or whether you're masking it with work or whether you're masking Absolutely. it with alcohol or, you know, we are all mirror images of one another struggling with fear. And you know what? It's so true. It's fear. And we just, I mean, I think you are, and I know I try to be, we just people, we just need to be kind to each other. Yeah. But being kind means you're opening yourself up for vulnerability and people don't want to do that because so they've been hurt over and over again and it just doesn't feel good. So they have to keep the armor up. Yeah. I just had a conversation with a couple of women today about vulnerability. You know, when you do get to that place, it is nirvana. I love it. It's and you, you're not attached to the outcome because whatever comes back to you, rejection, non-rejection, it doesn't matter because you're so good with yourself for putting yourself out there like that and you've healed that none of it really matters and you detach. I, it's, I feel, yeah, cause, and you're also, you're not an ego. Yeah, you know, and that's a beautiful thing. That out, you know, oh, sometimes I have that too. Well, uh, for me, what ego looked like is that I, it was really the flip side of ego as, you know, I'd have to show up a certain way, but really I was so fearful of being found out that I'm not good enough, that I'm not smart enough, that I'm a, a, an imposter, that you're not going to like me. So, you know, I was always chasing chasing you know working against that right and but that was all in your own head because you are good enough and you're not an imposter and all right it's all these it's things all that the we mental game it's a game that it's, we play with ourselves because it's easier to listen to the saboteur yes. inside of ourselves than it is to listen to the leader within us absolutely and i always say you know access your leader because when you get in touch with your leader your saboteur will get crowded out and your leader will become you know the prominent voice and then you'll be in nirvana like jerry said and it's a daily practice of course like anything yep else. absolutely because. and that's really important to know because it's not like we just every day are feeling amazing now we have to work on it it's it's just as much much work to not feel good as it is to feel good so you might as well work on feeling good absolutely and i my my thing is is that i at this point in my life i like to surround myself with people um, that when they see me coming, they get all lit up. Yeah, me too. I mean, me that's too. What yeah. Want. yeah. Yeah. You wanna you wanna I mean, create that energy in the room for yourself yeah. and for them. Um, that's beautiful. I love that. Uh, so I want to ask I you a few more it. questions. I We're like gonna that. cheers Greetings. to it. Absolutely. Cheers. Tell me how you like it. Oh, good. Mmm. Mm. Oh, I love it. It's good, right? Oh, it's smooth. <laughs> okay. It's so, so many people want to make changes in their careers or personal lives and are waiting for the right time and don't realize that the right time is right now. Mm -hmm. um, what got you to finally say, today is the day, and what did that look like for you? Okay, so I, um, because of I had social anxiety, I was taking a, uh, an acting class, and my teacher said to me, in order to deal better with the breathing, why don't you take a yoga class? 
And so when I went and I took a yoga class, I felt like I just landed and met my people, you know? So it resonated right away. It resonated. The music, the, you know, the outfits. Were you in the city? The, I was in the city, the clothing, the, like, you know, everything. Yeah, the whole vibe. And I couldn't stay for Shavasana. <laughs> oh, no, you were not there yet. <laughs> no, no. I, and it had to be power yoga yeah, 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 yeah. and all of yeah. that. But it really resonated. And, of course, being the type A and addictive personality, I was like, I, I, I got to do that. I, I got to be a teacher. So I took about 70,000 trainings. <laughs> you know, I couldn't get yeah, it off yep. the way I do. That's, every yeah. book, every yep. day, That's how I am with coaching. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and it was so lit up. And I went out and I began to teach in traditional yoga studios. And I felt like something for me was missing. I couldn't put my finger on it. And all of a sudden, my teacher had come back from Cambodia working with children with cleft palates offering meditation. Wow. And for that moment, I was awake and something just completely channeled. It was like a physiological uh, experience. I was like, oh my God, there's so many children that are suffering in our own backyard. Why don't we offer them yoga and meditation here? And so she's a real yogi. She's like, oh, I have a name, Children and Family Services. I'm going to call them. It took her like 10 minutes, and she still wasn't making the call fast enough for me. And I finally said, give me the name. You know, I'm like, like I'll take care of this. this. If it's going to get done, it's I, getting done I, I now. I called the CEO. And we went in, and um, we got this program where the little munchkins were bused to her studio. And I taught the girls here in Ridgewood. Oh, at a amazing. Group home. Yeah. Um, I'm very familiar with it. The group home. And, um, and that's where I started teaching. And I so you said it was physiological. And I just want to go back for a minute because I think this is important for everyone out there to hear. You had been doing your work. So you had taken your teacher training. You were now training, in, uh, teaching yoga at this point, right? When it came to you. So you had developed mindfulness mm -hmm. and you had developed an intuition. Mm -hmm. And so you could listen to that inner voice, mm -hmm. which may felt have felt physiological, but I think we all have that inner voice. And if we're able to clear Definitely. our heads and our minds and let go of those voices, we can tap into it and you can find your big aha, your big why, your big purpose also, just like Jerry did. That's so true. And, uh, and actually, that happened. And as time and life unfolds, what I realized with me, I pay so attention to my intuition. Because there were people that I would have friendships with. And I, you know, would walk away not feeling good. Filled, you know? yeah. Not feeling. And there were other friendships I felt like I just had cuddled up and read my favorite <laughs> novel, you know. So, like, those are the type of things that I really pay attention it's to. It's called self-awareness, guys. So, and you definitely want to start working on it. It's awesome. Yeah, it really is. Because then you, you get very clear. Yeah. Um, and so, and then you get into you start doing it, and you can trust yourself more and more because you're, exactly. you the results are what you want them to be. Exactly. Yeah. And so, I, I you look back and you realize how many times I wasn't paying attention right. to my intuition. Right. You know, muscle through. Yeah. Or, you know, even in a business deal when you know because I'd want to do a close. Right. So I've learned process. It's and hard I, for people like us to take our time and go step by step, but it's yes, so valuable. Yeah, and you can begin to trust it. Right. And you like, see the benefits of it. it totally. What yeah. am I meant? Why yes. Is it so that's how, that's really where, um, when that happened, I just went out and I, you know, started saying yes to everyone that wanted yoga. My, my car, my garage was filled with <laughs> yoga mats and blocks and, and used stuff and bugs and everything. And it was like, eh, you know, and then all of a sudden one day at, at this um, halfway house, um, Penny Finer, mm -hmm. who is um, the executive director. Yep. And my life partner. Yeah. My I haven't husband. met her, but I've heard amazing and, things. You know, I talk about like the, the, the sky opened up. She had come to volunteer to teach um, at, at the group home mm -hmm. in Richwood. And that's another thing where you pay attention. Right, the signs. The, the signs. universe is talking to you the every signs. minute. Yep. And then I, you know, she's a business person. Mm -hmm. I'm a business person. Yep. And so we're doing an offering yoga, but it is, make no mistake, it's, we treat this as a business. Yep. It's and a high then, level. 
it's a high level. And but and I will say for all everyone out there, really just baby steps. I like to start with one person. You're gonna see. I ask one you that program. Yep, you don't have to be this big yogi. You don't have to have your legs around your neck or oh. anything like that. This is just about getting started. It could even be putting a YouTube channel on and doing something at home if you're not comfortable going to a studio yet. Just do something different and you'll start to see changes. Yes, that's about the yoga, but oh, about sorry. starting a business. Oh, sorry. It's like I don't make, I don't want people to feel like it has taken 13 years to. Oh, right, right. You know, just start small. Right. Just start small and really... Get your business cards. And not so much what you're passionate about. I'm not so much into that passion. I'm into purpose. So that gets you out of ego. Yep. That gets you into service. And how are you able to f identify a way to serve? So you said you're into purpose. My next question for you is what's your big why? What is your purpose? My purpose is to help individuals, what I realize now, um, yeah, we are serving, we have, you know, we have thousands and thousands of clients, t you know, students, patients on ground, um, but we also have program directors and we have advanced training for mental health trauma and addiction. And what I personally love is when um, an individual identifies what lights them up what really and to give them the platform create a platform for them to fly so your your purpose i just want to make sure we get this your big why your purpose is to lift others up so they can reach their potential correct okay what's the one thing you're grateful for right now health health is important Without really, it, you don't have anything. Uh, exactly. And, and sobriety. Because without sobriety, I don't have my family. My, it comes before my family, my husband, my friends, my job, sobriety. And without sobriety, you don't have your health. Exactly. So it, I, I, I like that. Right. What's the best way for the viewers to contact you or Kula if they want to make a donation, learn more about the services, get involved, or want to learn more from you and about your story? Okay, hi. <laughs> um, you could reach me at jerry at kulafakarma.org. G E R I. G E R I. And anybody that wants to connect and um, sit and have a cup of coffee, um, I'm your girl. I really am. Also, Instagram? So Instagram is uh, I at Kula for Karma Instagram, <laughs> and I Jerry Topfer T O P F E R. We'll post Instagram. it. We'll write it out for you guys. And you know I um, please you know we we now are when it comes to Kula for Karma you don't have to be a yoga teacher um, to get involved. And um, I feel so incredibly blessed to be able to really shift the stigma around mental health trauma and addiction. And so either you yourself are struggling or you know someone really close to you that is, is struggling with mental health trauma and addiction. And so, you know, we just really need to be awake and mindful. And when you ask somebody how they're doing, Ask them again, how are you really doing? No man or woman left behind. That's my motto. I love that, and I was going to ask you, is there anything I didn't ask you? But I think you just kind of finished really strong, and I think it. this is a great way to leave it. So thank you so much. You're awesome. Well, thank She's you amazing, so isn't thank she? You. No. So thank you, thank you for amazing. being here. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you so much.